Good evening, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you for joining us again on tonight. I was supposed to have surgery on today, but it was postponed to next Wednesday, so I get to worship with you all on tonight. And I want to publicly thank each and every one of you all for your many prayers because they are so much needed. I know that God has his own timing for things to happen, and I am really okay with that. So let us continue to pray because we know that God is such a good God. First Chronicles 16, 34 through 36 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God, of our salvation. Gather and rescue us from among the nations so that we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people shouted, Amen and praise the Lord. Our song for tonight is God is a good God. He's a great God. He can do anything but fail. He has moved so many mountains out of my way. God is a wonderful God. We know that God is so good. And I just thank and praise him for allowing me to be here once again. in the name of Jesus Christ we come we thank you again Father for another privilege another honor another opportunity to come before you we thank you Father God for blessing us Father God to hear your word one more time we thank you for those who have come to hear we ask you to bless us Father God that we will receive your word as we hear your word bless us Father God that we will take your word and be about your business that lives will be changed because of your word. That lives will be renewed because of your word. That things will be different because of your word. We ask you to bless us now as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. He's moved so many mountains. God is. He is wonderful, wonderful. He is the wonderful God. I'm telling you, the God we serve is such a wonderful God. 
we have been blessed again by his favor and we have come again to worship him for he is the almighty and the all-knowing God. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here again for our Bible study. We're in Philippians chapter 3. We're in Philippians chapter 3. One more time, we'll be looking at verses 8 through verse number 11. Verses 8 through number 11. Uh, God has a lot more to say than what Paul has already say, said to us in the book of Philippians. So if you would turn to the book of Philippians, we'll begin at verse number 8. And if the Lord said the same, we will end up at verse number 11. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us. For those who are joining us by live broadcast, thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church at our remote location. Amen. At our remote, remote location. Once again, thank you so much for being a part of our service. We're just so glad that you come to join in with us again. Amen. Let's look here at uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse number 8. Last week we covered verses 1 through 7. We'll cover verses 8 through 11 on tonight. So we want to look here and see what Paul, Paul writes from a jail cell. He writes to those who are, who are in the church of Philippi. He addresses those who are believers, and he says a lot to us. Last week we ended up by saying that Paul says that he has accomplished a lot of things. Paul says he's accomplished a lot of things, and if any man is to brag about anything, Paul has a right to brag. He says in verses number five and six, he says, Moreover so, because I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, I'm of, I'm of the tribe of Judah, so I got a good pedigree behind me. I am a Jew among Jews. I am a Jew of Jew. And if you're talking to me concerning the law, let me tell you, I'm a Pharisee. <laughs> so I know the law, and I am one who, who follows the law, and I know how to follow the law well. Then he says, concerning zeal, I was so zealous, and I am so zealous even now that I have prosecuted, persecuted the church. And because I persecuted the church on the other side, when I came on this side, on the Lord's side, I still have the zeal and excitement about me. He says, I, concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. Concerning righteousness, I consider myself righteous. He talks about the fact that he is righteous because he is righteous of the law, and therefore he is blameless. So Paul lays out his resume in verses 1 through 5. Then verse he closes out in verse number 6. And then in verse number 7 he says, But what things were gained for me, these I have counted loss for Christ. So he continues this same thought in verse number 8. He says the things that was gained for me, the things that, that was a blessing to me to have, the things that I love the things that, that gave me a big resume, those things I, I count as loss for Jesus Christ. Let me just say to you today, my dear, if you find yourself bragging on yourself, that is nothing compared to Jesus Christ. You need to be about Jesus' business. You need to be uh, with Christ. And we're going to find out tonight just how much in tune Paul talks about he was in Christ Jesus and how we ought to be in Christ Jesus. Let's look at verse number 8, Philippians chapter 3, verse number 8. He says, yet indeed I also count all things lost. He says again, as he said in verse number 7, he says it again in verse number 8. He says, I, yes, I do. Yes, yet. He says, uh, he says that I have counted it loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Paul says to us today that regardless of what you've accomplished, regardless of where you've been, regardless of how you were born, regardless of your makeup and your family background, it all ought to be counted loss for Jesus Christ. And he's going to tell you later on just how much loss he counts it. He says, indeed, I also 
count all things lost for the excellency, the excellency of Jesus Christ. This word excellency means the surpassing worth. It is surpassing any worth than all these things I just list. My, my relationship with Jesus Christ, and then later on he's going to talk about his fellowship. His relationship with Jesus Christ is so important to him that he counts everything as lost. He comes to this, this point where he says, for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, Look what he says. This word excellency means surpassing worth. It means better. It means higher. It means supreme. It means superior. What Paul says here is all the things that I've accomplished, all the things I was born in, all the things that have been given unto me, all the things that God has allowed me to accomplish, let me tell you, the excellency of Jesus Christ, the worthness of my relationship with Jesus Christ is better. He says it's higher. He says it's supreme and it is superior. Paul, Paul says to us today that regardless of what you have, regardless of where you've done, what you've done, uh, your relationship with Jesus Christ will take you higher and will be higher than anything that you will ever, ever, ever know. He says, the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. He talks about this knowledge, but this excellency of the knowledge of Christ is far above our head knowledge. It's far above what we know. It's far above what we read in a book. It's far above what we have established. He's talking about the excellency of Jesus Christ. It dwells in one's heart. I told you on a few meetings ago that if you find find somebody that is not walking with the Lord and will mistreat people, it's a heart problem. Let me tell you, it's a heart problem. It's, it's a heart problem. That's why we want to walk with God. That's why we want the excellency, the surpassing superiorities that we find in Jesus Christ. We would not find it anywhere else through anybody else. It's not just head knowledge. It's, it's not just, just knowing a bunch of stuff. It's more than that. It's an intimacy with Christ. It is a conclusion that I want to know Jesus more than I want to know anybody else. It says to the young girl, it says to the young boy that you need a mate. You need a mate that is more concerned about Jesus than he or she is concerned about you. For if you find somebody that is sold out for you, you just got somebody that is sold out for you. And sooner or later, when, you, when your hair get thin, they're going to walk out on you. Sooner or later, when, when you get thin or thick, they're going to walk out on you. But when you have an intimacy for Jesus Christ, now when you are a sellout for somebody else, I sell out for you, baby. You know, I will sell out for you. But you don't need a sellout for a person. You don't need a sellout for you. You need an all out for Jesus Christ. You see, there are some who will cop out. There are some who will run out. There are some who would step out. But there are some that, some that will sell out the moment money is offered to them. The good news today is those of us who walk with Jesus Christ, we ought to walk with him with such intimacy until we won't sell out for anything. But we will be an all out for Jesus, for Jesus the Christ. We ought to be an all out. For him, we ought to be all out for Jesus because Jesus went all out for us. Yes. We ought to be all out for Jesus because Jesus has been all out for us. He's gone all out, out for us. He has he has gone out. He says that I, I I counted all loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. He says that Jesus is not only my Savior, but He's my Lord. Let me just say to you today, you need Jesus to be your Lord. You need Jesus to be your Lord. It's good that you're born again. It's good that you are saved. It's good that you trusted Jesus as your Savior. It's good that you're on your way to heaven. But let me tell you, you not only need Jesus 
to be your savior, you need him to be your Lord. And as Jesus is your Lord, he, he is your conductor. He, he is your master. He's the one that can tell you what to do. There ought to be somebody that's listening to me today that says that I'm all out for Jesus. And since I'm all out for Jesus, there are some things that I love to do. I put them away. There are some things that I enjoy doing. I left them alone for the sake of Jesus the Christ. But what you need to understand is if you leave those things alone for Jesus, then you are all out for him. But it's not just in your deeds. It's just not, it's not just in what you do. Being all out for Jesus is an intimate walk with him. Yes. And when you have an intimate walk with Jesus Christ, you understand very well that some things are going to come up that you're going to have to push back. You're going to have to push against some things that you're going to have to ignore for Jesus Christ. It is the picture. It is the picture of a wife that says, I would cuss him out, but I'm all out for Jesus. Yes. It is a picture, it is a picture of, a, of a child that, that obeys what parents have said because of Jesus. Because Jesus is their Lord. Because Jesus makes the difference. Uh, you have the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Of whom, of whom I have suffered loss of all things. You ought to be willing to suffer for Jesus. You ought to be willing to suffer loss for Jesus. Here is a picture. It's a picture of you on your job. And while you're on your job, your supervisor says, if you do this one thing wrong, I will make you the next supervisor. If you just count these things that's going out to the customer and take one out and make sure that you make sure that you make the customer think it's still good and it's still the right amount of numbers in there, just take one out every now and then. And when you get through shipping it, uh, write on the paper that you put all 10 of them in there, even though you put nine in there. It is the picture of a person that will say to their supervisor, I will not do that because of the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is my Lord. And then, well, if you don't do it, I'm going to fire you. You see, the problem is, if you do it, you still may get fired. <laughs> or if you do it, you, you still may get laid off. If you do it, the job still may be shut down. So you might as well go out on Jesus' side. Yes. He said, I count it all loss, all things. I count all things. I'm willing to suffer for Jesus Christ. Why would you be willing to suffer for Jesus? Because you know in the end that Jesus has already paid it all and you will be successful if you stand with Jesus. I'm determined to stand with Jesus. I'm determined to say no to the devil. You see, when you suffer for Christ's sake, you're willing to say no for those things that are good to you, but you know they're not good for you. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to suffer for the sake of Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Verse number eight. He says, I, I count all things as rubbish. Mm -hmm. He says, I, I've suffered loss. I've, I've lost everything for the sake of Christ. And I'm willing to lose everything for the sake of Jesus Christ. I'm willing to lose it, lose it for the sake of Christ. My question to you today is, are you willing to lose it for the sake of Christ? Are you willing to put the other things aside for the sake of Christ? Are you willing to stand by God and stand for God for the sake of Christ? In verse number 8, Philippians chapter 3, he, he closed that verse out by saying that I count them as rubbish that I might gain Christ. Paul is saying when all the things that I listed in verses 5, 6, I count those things as rubbish for the sake of Christ. 
preacher, what is this word rubbish? It means that which is thrown to the dogs. Rubbish is, is, is that which human beings discard. Rubbish is that which is refused. It is refused. Refuse means it is that that is, is thrown out and thrown away to the animals. It's not worth human consumption. And finally, this word rubbish means dong. This word rubbish means dong. It, it means trash. It means a word that I can't tell you right now. It is horse manure. It is cow manure. It is rubbish. It is good for nothing. So anything that we've accomplished, anything that we have, verse number eight, Paul says, it is good for nothing. It is worthless. It is not worth anything. Whenever you compare anything that we've accomplished or anything we've done, whenever we compare that to our knowledge of Jesus Christ and our relationship to him, then we have to conclude that it's nothing. It is good for nothing. It is, it is rubbish. See, we thought we had something going for ourselves. We, we thought we had some great accomplishments that we can brag on. When you go before mankind, you may be able to brag on it. But when it comes to Jesus and you compare it to him, it's nothing worth bragging about. Because he is, I told you, superior. He is supreme. He is the great one. Jesus the Christ. Verse number nine, Philippians chapter three. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Let me just share, share this with you. The fact is, we ought to be found in him. To be found in him. Not just having a knowledge of him, but to be intimately twined with him. It is to be personally engaged with Jesus Christ. To be found in him means that the perfect one has collaboration with the imperfect one. It means to collaborate with Jesus Christ, to work with him, to partner with him, to suffer with him, to be a part of him so much so that you can't tell one person from the other. Now you have the imperfect, that's, that's, that's man. And you have the perfect, which is Jesus Christ. But we ought to be found in him. Paul says, I want to be found in Jesus in such a way, even though I realize I'm imperfect, I want to be found with that which is perfect. And that which is perfect, perfect is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It is twofold. It is twofold. This word found in him, first of all, the first example I give to you is collaboration. Coagulation. Coagulation. Co Agulation. It is a water treatment term. Coagulation is when you have molecules floating in the water. And when, when molecules are floating in the water, we put a little alum in there, which is a chemical. We put a, we, we put a little chlorine in there, which is a different chemical. And the, and the, the integration of those two chemicals during the sedimentation process creates Coagulation. Coagulation is when particles of different sorts come together and bind together as gel. They are tied together doing coagulation. And they stay together through the good and the bad. Because where there is coagulation, there's also flocculation. And flocculation is the term doing water treatment. It, it's when the batters go in and beat the water. It is a symbol of the Christian being beat up in the world in which we live. It is a symbol of the Christian being battered in these waters in which we live. 
It is a symbol of, of trauma. It is a symbol of, of turmoil. It's a symbol of trials and tribulation that we go through. But when we go through coagulation, that means we stick together with Jesus regardless. If we go through filtration, sedimentation, it doesn't matter if we go through the sand or not. It doesn't matter if we go through the storm, the rain. It doesn't matter whether it's hot or cold. We are stuck with Jesus. And we want to be there with him. The good news for you today, if you're saved and know that you are, you're born again and know that you are. And because you are born again, you will always be born again. Once saved, saved forever. You have eternal security. You have security that, that you don't have to worry about your soul ever again. But you ought to be concerned about your spiritual man. When we walk with Jesus, we have number one is coagulation. Coagulation means that we're just tied together and wherever Jesus goes, we are willing to go. Whatever happens, come what may, I would rather be with Jesus than with anybody else. It is called coagulation where we bind together with him. The second part of, of this, to be found in him, the second part, the example is when blood clocks. Now, there are times when you have a blood clock, it goes to the wrong parts of your body, and you die. But this time, I'm talking about when a blood clock, it stops you from bleeding freely. So once you have surgery, of course, you want your blood to clot so your blood will not be gushing out of your body freely. You want, you want your blood to coagulate. You want your blood to come together. You want your blood to create a dam so it won't flow freely. That's how, that's how it is. That's how it is when you're found in him. When you're found in him, Jesus is able not only to go through the storm and the rain with you, he's able to shut the storm down in your life. He's able to shut it down. He, he wants to shut it down in your life. The problem is we have to be found in him. And if we're not found in him, then we seek to run to him when we get in trouble. Stop waiting till the storms come. Go ahead and be found in him. Go ahead and be with him. Be, be in partnership with him. Be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, Paul said, which is of the law. Paul says that my own righteousness is of the law because I knew the law. I mean, knowing, knowing, knowing the law was nothing for me. I can quote it. I spoke several languages. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Hebrew among Hebrews. I really, if you really want to say it, I really got it going on. He says, but... But my righteousness does not supersede the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He says, if I'm found in him, I don't want to have my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. You see, we understand, we must understand that our righteousness is only filthy rags in the sight of God. We are only deemed righteous because of Jesus Christ himself. You know you're a sinner. You, you know you messed up. You know you have done things wrong and you continue to do things wrong. You know it. I know it. And everybody else knows it. But because of Jesus <laughs> and the blood that he shed it on Calvary, because of Jesus the Christ, let me just share with you, now we are viewed as righteous. Righteousness has been imputed in us. Righteousness has become a part of us, not because our own righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. What I'm trying to tell you is when God looks at us through the lens of Jesus Christ, he does not see us as sinful man. He sees us through the lens of Jesus Christ and views us as righteous. Now, your neighbor may not view you as righteous. Your family members may not view you as righteous. Your coworkers may not view you as righteous. 
But when you have Jesus Christ, you are viewed, you, you are deemed righteous. God imputed righteousness in through, through, to us through Jesus Christ. He says, I don't want to have my righteousness. I want to be, be found in, in righteousness of Jesus Christ, faith in him, through faith in Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, this is a faith walk out here. <laughs> Let me tell you, if, if, if people have never walked the walk of faith before, you have folk talking about praying now and trusting God that never have talked about it. Nice. Politicians saying pray. Doctors saying pray. Nice. Heathens saying pray. Churchgoers saying pray. Non-churchgoers are saying pray. Let me tell you, it is prayer time. But what we need to understand that our faith should not be in just shutting down the virus. Our faith ought to be that Jesus Christ is the great physician. Our faith ought to be in the fact that Jesus Christ is the healer. Our faith ought to be Jesus Christ has paid it all for us and all to him we owe. Our sins were like crimson, but Jesus Christ washed us whiter than snow. It says the righteousness which is from God by faith. Verse number 10, that I might know him. I, he, he need to, you need to know him. You, need to, you really need to know Jesus Christ. You, you need to know him. You, you need to know him. The Bible says, the psalmist says that, that God showed Moses his ways and showed the children of Israel his mighty acts. The psalmist declares that every leader needs to know God and know God's ways. Every leader, every spiritual man, every spiritual woman who leads people ought to know the ways of God. You ought, to, you ought to be walking with him in such a way until you know him, his ways. Where you can tell men, women, boys, and girls, no, God doesn't act like that. No, that's not of God. No, that's not something that God will do and God has done. That's not a God. We have to know him. Really know him in such an intimate way until we can track him even when we don't see him. We know what God will and what God can do. Even when God doesn't answer us the way we want him to answer us, we know the spirit of God. We know the ways of God. Paul says here that I might know him. And then he says, in the power of his resurrection. Paul says he want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Paul says, I want to know him. First of all, I want to know the power of his resurrection from day to day. He says, in my daily walk, I want to know I want to know that God has offered me power because of his resurrection. Let me tell you, my dear, if you've been born again, if you've been saved, the same Jesus that got up from the dead by way of the Holy Spirit, that same Jesus, that same Holy Spirit is in you. And he gives you power to say no to sin. He gives you power to say yes to that which is not sin. Paul says, I want to know him in such a way I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Let me tell you, it was some, it was some power that was exemplified. It was some power that was exuded on Calvary after Calvary. There was some power exuded in the tomb. The Bible says that he rose early that third day morning. There was power. Paul says, I want to know him in the power of of his resurrection. The power. I want to know him. Through the power of his resurrection. Then he, he doesn't stop there. I want to know him. In the fellowship of his suffering. Woo. Good God Almighty. Some of us. Most of us. All of us. We want the power of his resurrection. But we don't want the fellowship. Of his suffering. 
says the fellowship of his suffering being made conform or being made conformable. King James says being made conformable. New King James said being conformed to his death. Paul says, I want to know him in his suffering. It's not enough for me to know him in his power, but I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. This word fellowship is the same word that we get the word partnership. It is the word that, that we find our partnership with Jesus Christ. We have to be in partnership with him, even in his suffering. From day to day, from, from, from pillar to post, from walk to walk, from situation to situation, we have to get to point in our lives where we understand that in order to have sunrise, Sunday morning, resurrection, we got to have Good Friday. <laughs> Some people want Sunday, Sunday resurrection. Some people want, well, most of us, all of us want, we want the glory and the grandeur that took place on Resurrection Sunday morning. But we don't want the suffering and the passion that went that Jesus went through on Thursday and Friday. Where there's no good Friday, there's no Resurrection Sunday morning. In the world, they said like this, there must be some rain. Rain must fall on the just as well as the unjust. The Bible is clear that we're going to have problems. The just have problems, but the just shall live by faith. When we talk about fellowship of his suffering, we're talking about a partnership. Years ago, years ago during a time when racism was strong, when racism was beating upon this nation real well, Stevie Wonder got with another guy, Paul McCarthy, and they penned the song, Ebony and Ivory. Stevie Wonder and Paul McCarthy said, Ebony and Ivory, we stick together on our piano. He, he says, Ebony and Ivory, we, we stick together and we are part of each other and we are fighting for the same cause it was clear that they were going to be united against racism. But they're going to be united against discrimination. The song says, Ebony and Ivory, we stick together through all situations. He talked about the fact that they stick together and they walk together, even in the video shows them walking on top of a piano where, where Paul McCarthy was walking on the white keys and and... And Stevie Wonder was sitting on the black keys because they're going to stick together and they're going to create songs together. They're going to stick together and fight against racism and they're going to stick together and be on one accord because they're in fellowship. And they knew because they came out with the song, they sung the song that there would be some persecution. But they have come to the conclusion, they had already come to the conclusion, we're going to remain in partnership. We're going to remain in fellowship. Paul says here that I want to know the fellowship of his suffering. Paul understands that there's going to be some suffering in this life. We got family members that will get sick in this life. <laughs> we, we, got, we got money that will be taken from us in this life. We got hackers out here in this life. We got what we call back home pigeon droppers <laughs> that take your money and fool you like you're getting something for nothing. Let me just say to young people right here and to seniors, let me tell you, if it's too good to be true, it's not true. There will be some people that will take advantage of you. And you wonder, how can they take advantage of little bit of children? How can they take advantage of old senior citizens? It's suffering. We need Jesus. <laughs> and we need to know him in the power of his resurrection. But we also have to get to know him. Intimately bound with him in the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed 
to his death. Paul says, I am willing to be conformed and so much in partnership with Jesus that I, I may end up losing my life for. And he did. My question to you today, are you willing to go all the way with Jesus and even lose your life for him? He says, I want to be conformed with him even to death. Some people can't even, can't even be conformed to him even if we ask them to do something that they didn't intend to do. Well, you should have given me a better notice than this. You should have told me this months ago. I don't like this, being put on the spot the last minute. Let me tell you, just be conformed to Jesus' likeness. Just be conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ. Just be conformed to him. Paul says in Romans 12, to be not conformed to the world, but be transformed to the renewing of your mind. And he says here that if you're going to be conformed to anybody, be conformed to Jesus, even to the death of the cross. Finally, verse number 11, he says, if by any means I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. I'm willing to be conformed to the death of Jesus Christ. If by any other means, there's no other means, <laughs> that I would be conformed to the resurrection. Now Paul talks about his personal resurrection. He talks about, first of all, being conformed to him day to day while he's living. But then he talks about after he's dead, Jesus will have a resurrection of the saints of God. Will you be resurrected? The only way for you to be resurrected is to be born again. The only way for you to really live with Jesus and live for him, you must be born again. You have to be born in your spirit. You, you don't, I'm not talking about born from your mama. I'm talking about born again in the second birth. I say to you today that you must trust Jesus as your Savior in order to be born again. Before you fall into the fellowship of his suffering. See, some people are suffering, but they are not suffering because they're in fellowship with Jesus Christ. Because in order to be in fellowship with him, you have to know him. In order to know him, you must be born again. My appeal to you tonight is to be born again. My appeal to you who are born again is don't play church, get in church. My appeal to you who are in church, don't just get in church, let the church get in you. Amen. Paul says that I want to know Jesus in an intimate way, in such an intimate way until I not only feel the resurrection, not only do I live in the resurrection, but I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Have you noticed, have you noticed even Christians are going through struggles as a result of the coronavirus? Have you noticed, have you noticed that, that, that even Christians have family members? I think I have about three that's passed away. It had not been confirmed, but I think I have three that's passed away because of the coronavirus. Have you, have you really realized that that rain is falling in all our lives. But when you walk with Jesus, when you live with Jesus, when you live for Jesus, you understand real well that it's sweeter and sweeter, round by round, round by round. I'd rather go through what we're going through with Jesus than to go through what we're going through without Jesus. I oftentimes wonder, how did I make it so long without him? Because Jesus has been giving me another chance and another chance and another chance. I'm saying to you today, trust Jesus as your Savior. Amen. Believe the story that Jesus died for your sin. Paul says, know him in the power of his resurrection. Believe that he died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. This word, this word rose, mean that he was roused and aroused from the dead. He rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, he got up with you in mind. 
He wants you to be born again. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to go to heaven. All of us want to go to heaven. But in order to get there, you must be born again. You must believe this simple story that Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. That after they killed him, mean men put him in a borrowed tomb. You must believe the story that even though mean men put him in a borrowed tomb, early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. And the Bible teaches, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, the Bible teaches, John 3, 16 says, that if you just believe the story, trust this story to get you to heaven. You can get there through Jesus. If you're going to get there, <laughs> Greyhound won't get you there. Yes. Southwest can't get you there. Jet Blue can't get you there. If you're going to get to heaven, you need Jesus. Mm -hmm. I appeal to you today to trust the story that Jesus died for your sins. He was laid in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you need to know him today, if you need to get to know him, why don't you bow your heads with me and repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life to be your personal Savior and your Lord. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. Save my soul. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. If you prayed that prayer and we believe that you became born again and you're qualified to go to heaven when you die, then there may be somebody else that's listening to me that have not been living according to the standards of God. This is a good moment for you to change your heart and change your life. This is a good time for you to be sincere about the word of God and sincere about what God is doing in your life. The door of the church is open. You need to come to him just as you are. We need to trust him to be our Lord as well as our Savior. Why don't you get to know him today? And if you are in between churches or don't, do not have a church home, I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where our church is led by Jesus Christ, where Jesus is the center of attention, where Jesus is the main attraction. Will you come to him today? If you would, if you received him as your personal savior, please inbox me and let me know. Contact me and let me know that you received him as your savior. And if you're here today and you have received him as your savior and you've joined the church, the New Beginning Church, you want to make New Beginning your home, inbox me and let me know that you want to reside at the New Beginning Church. Every person needs a church home. Why don't you come and join us in this great experience with the Lord. Amen and thank God. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes and through offering. It is time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes and through offering. The Lord has blessed us again to, to come before him, and we, would, we just want to give to the Lord through tithes and through offering, and this is your opportunity to give to him. 
the Lord Jesus Christ. You can give to the church by, by two means. You can give by way of our cash app, or you can give by mailing your offering in. You can give to the Lord, and we will be glad to receive your offering. You can mail your offering to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. Seven seven four five nine. You can mail your offering to the New Beginning Church. The New Beginning Church, P.O. Box five zero three seven Missouri City, Texas seven seven four five nine. And we will be glad to receive your contributions to the New Beginning Church. Our cash app is cash tag NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Soul. You can give by way of cash app. And I say to all of you who are members of New Beginning Church and those who give to the New Beginning Church, give immediately after you receive. Once you receive your blessing, Give unto the Lord. Give it unto the Lord. Don't wait. Don't hold it. Don't wait till we regather again. Give God the first off the top. And don't wait till you buy this or buy that. Give unto the Lord. Some of us have it twisted. We think that we only give to the Lord to pay bills. We give to the Lord to have that personal, intimate relationship that we talked about. So give to the Lord. And let me allow this time, let me allow this time to thank those who've been giving, those who've been giving to the Lord by way of our cash app, those who've been giving by mailing in checks to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you so much for giving to us and, and blessing the ministry of God. We want to make sure that you have a place to meet and join other believers. And so I say to you, whatever you do, always give to the Lord and God will bless you and keep you. Please join us again right here on Sunday morning at 1045 a.m., 1045 a.m. every Sunday, right here at our, our remote location on the air on this Sunday. We will be doing communion virtually. We will be doing communion on the air. So you can either buy you some juice or use the juice you have at home or use you some crackers to participate in communion with us virtually. We have virtual communion right here in our remote, re remote location with you on the air. We want to make sure that we recognize what Jesus has done for us over 2,000 years on Calvary. So we're not meeting for communion. We're going to have communion virtually on the air on Sunday morning during our 1045 a.m. service. We will also have Bible study at 720 next Wednesday. We will have Bible study at 720. And Sunday morning, we will have 9 a.m. Sunday school. Our youth are having... Uh, Sunday school online. Our children are having Sunday school online as well. And so our adults will meet right here online again for Sunday morning Sunday school. Um, we want to make sure that the word is still going out and the word is continuing to go out. And if you're not receiving a text from me for our daily reading for Sunday school, please inbox me and let me know or text me and let me know so I can add you to the list of people to text our daily reading. The daily reading leads right up to the Sunday school a lesson for that Sunday. So be a part and learn all you can learn about Jesus. Be found in him and partnership and fellowship with him and be a part of, of this ministry of Jesus Christ. Again, we want to pray for our sister, my wife, Sister Carolyn Davis, as she's looking forward to surgery. Uh, I guess looking forward is a word that that I can use. I guess she's looking forward to it. She was looking forward to it today. 
Uh, but um, she's looking forward to surgery as it has been put off another week. So we want to lift up her, Sister Carolyn Davis, as we do our prayer time at home and do our prayer time day to day. Lift her up that all will go well and that God will, will lead us into and lead the doctors into a, a successful surgery and lead her into a speedy recovery. Amen. Thank you so much for gathering with us. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now. We bless you now. We thank you, Father God, that you blessed us in your word. We ask you to bless your word, that it will go forth, that lives will be changed, and men and women will be refreshed. That, that peace will be given. We pray, Father God, that you give us relief from the coronavirus immediately. Father God, bless our people and continue to bless us to walk with you and trust in you. Bless us to be found in you, Father God. Bless us to have the fellowship of your suffering and also the power of your resurrection. And we thank you now. We ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for joining us. Please continue to visit with us. We're glad that you have come. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.